Let's learn about meiosis. What is meiosis? It is the process in which the division of cells takes place. The division of the special type of cells that are known as germ cells, they are divided by this process. At the end of the meiosis, there is the production of four daughter cells that are haploid cells, which means that they will contain the half number of chromosomes as compared to their parent cells. In this process, there is the transfer of genetic information from parent to the offspring takes place. To understand the complete mechanism of meiosis, it is divided into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, is also known as reduction stage, in which one parent cell gave rise to two daughter cells. It is known as reduction because the number of chromosomes are reduced from 46 to 23. As the parent cell contains the 46 number of chromosomes, so the daughter cells will contain the half number of chromosomes as compared to that of the parent cell. So the parent cell contains the 46 chromosome and each daughter cell will contain the 23, 23 number of chromosomes, which is half of that of the parent cell. Meiosis 1 is followed by meiosis 2, which is also known as division phase. As in meiosis 1, the number of chromosomes are already halved. So meiosis 2, only a division of cells will take place. Each daughter cell will give rise to two daughter cells. So at the end of meiosis 2, there will be four daughter cells each will contain the same number of chromosomes, that is 23, which is the half of that of the parent cell. As I already explained, meiosis is divided into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Let's see here again what happens in meiosis 1, as in meiosis 1 is the reduction phase in which, which means that the number of chromosomes are reduced from 46 to 23, as one parent cell gives rise to Two daughter cells each contains the half number of chromosomes as compared to that of the parent cell, 23 and 23. Here is the example what actually happens in meiosis 1 as the chromosomes in the human body are arranged in the form of homologous pairs. As these are the sets of chromosomes, these are the 46 chromosomes as the human body contains one cell contains the 46 number of chromosomes and if they are present in pairs, we say that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, that they are always present in pair, one from one come from the father and one come from the mother. We say that one, sets, one chromosome is the maternal chromosome and other is the fraternal chromosome. So that's why it makes the homologous chromosomes. They are present in the form of homologous chromosomes. These chromosomes are same in size and same genes are present on each chromosome. So these 46 chromosomes, or we say that 23 pair of chromosomes, these are the homologous chromosomes. In meiosis 1, these pair of or these homologous chromosomes actually separate from each other. That's the one, the parental, and the other is the maternal. So these one come from the father, other from the mother. So these independently separate from each other so 23 sets of chromosome goes to one cell and 23 chromosomes go to the other cell so that's how these homologous pairs are separated from each other so this movement of chromosomes or separation of chromosomes from each other these are random that's in some cells it will uh, they will be moving the uh, fraternal like father chromosomes and in some cells there will be moving the maternal chromosomes so here the recombination or we say that independent assortment also occurs that there are the mixing of genes because of the movement of chromosomes randomly for into the one cell and to the other cells and these homologous chromosomes are separated from each other as the meiosis one is followed by meiosis two what happens with meiosis 2? Meiosis 2 is also known as the division phase in which the simply the chromosomes are separated or divided. The chromosomes, there are 23 chromosomes in each cell, so which, which means that 23 chromosomes will be having 46 chromatids and these chromatid separation takes place and each cell will contain 23 chromatids and 23 chromatids, which means that 23 chromosomes and 23 chromosomes. What actually happens in meiosis 2? That in meiosis 1, one parent cell gives rise to two daughter cells, then each daughter cell 
it contains the 23 chromosome one cell contains the 23 chromosome and the other cell contains the 23 chromosomes which were before homologous chromosomes and they were separated in meiosis one now as you can see here these chromosomes contains the chromatids these are the sister chromatids to each other and these are attached to each other through centromere so in meiosis two simply these sister chromatids are separated and move towards the opposite poles so these 23 chromosomes these can each chromosome contains two sister chromatids so 23 chromosomes it will contains the total number of 46 chromatids so 23 sister chromatids will move to the one cell and then 23 sister chromatids will move to the other cell so that's how they will contain 23 and 23 so there are there were two cells formation in meiosis one so in meiosis two each one will give rise to two daughter cells so at the end of meiosis two there will be total number of four daughter cells which contains the 23 and 23 number of chromosomes which were actually the sister chromatids separated by the chromosome separation as the chromosomes their sister chromatids were separated and 23 moves to the one cell and 23 moves to the other cell why we need meiosis meiosis is needed for the production of germline cells such as gametes production for the production of eggs and sperm cells as the egg cells production takes place in the ovaries and the process is known as oogenesis while the production of sperms takes place in males in testes and the process is known as spermatogenesis so the process of oogenesis and spermatogenesis it follows the process of meiosis for the formation of gametes eggs and sperm cells they need the number of chromosomes which must be half as compared to that of the parent cell as the parent cell contains the 46 number of chromosome so each gametes must contain the half number like 23 and 23 number of chromosomes as 23 number of chromosomes comes from the mother and 23 number of chromosomes comes from the father and then they collectively make up the diplite chromosomes as these half number of chromosomes 23 chromosomes from egg cells and 23 from sperm cells they together form the diploid cells which contains the 46 number of chromosomes and that make up the normal human being so haploid cells like egg cells and sperm cells these 23 and 23 half number of chromosomes these are produced by the process of meiosis then during fertilization when they are fused together they form the zygote formation these two combine together 23 and 23 they make up the diploid zygote which makes up the 46 number of chromosomes and that makes the human life possible as the production of these haploid gametes takes place through meiosis meiosis it reduces the number of chromosomes by half and fertilization then restores these number as for example you can see here if the fertilization of the same number of chromosomes takes place like if they are not get half by meiosis and their only mitosis occurs the mother cell will contains the 46 number of chromosomes and the father cells will contain the 46 number of chromosome then the child will be having 46 and 46 there will be too much chromosomes that is not possible for the formation of a life so that's why meiosis reduces the genetic content into half so 23 number of chromosomes comes from the mother and 23 number of chromosomes comes from the father that makes the correct number of chromosomes that is 46 or we say that 23 pairs of chromosomes that's why the life is possible because this is the right number of chromosomes that makes up the human body let's learn about the phases of meiosis in detail uh, meiosis is divided into two stages meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 each stage has further phases as the meiosis 1 so all the phases will be given with one prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 and telophase 1 while meiosis 2 they will be labeled with two so meiosis 2 has prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and telophase 2 let's start with the first stage of meiosis that is the meiosis before meiosis 1 
the cell has to pass through the cell cycle. The cell cycle of meiosis it has further two phases: interphase and amphase. As it is meiosis one, so the interphase is interphase one. The interphase one is further divided into three phases: G1 phase, S phase, and G2 phase. And the G2 phase does not take place in the meiosis one of the interphase one. First of all, the G1 phase, also known as the primary growth phase of the cell, in which the duplication of the cytoplasmic organelles takes place and the cell grows in size. All the preparation of the cells for the next phase, S phase, takes place and completed in the G1 phase. The cell after G1 phase goes to the S phase, S phase also known as the synthesis phase or the replication phase in which the DNA material is duplicated. It gets doubled so that they can be divided into daughter cells. The S phase or the replication phase in which as the chromosomes you can see here, they are present in this form, in this single chromatid form. And as in meiosis 1, these chromosomes are present in the form of homologous pairs. These are homologous chromosomes are shown here. It will form, this is the centromere, so the sister chromatids for each homologous chromosome, there will be the formation of these sister chromatids. So that's how the replication of the chromosomes takes place. Two chromatids are identical to each other and joined at the centromere. So this sister chromatid formation takes place in the S phase of the cell cycle as the this form of chromosome we say that the condensed form of chromosome they can be only seen during arm phase of the cell cycle before that the chromosomes they are present in the form of chromatin chromatin which are the loosely packed form of the dna are known as the chromatin after dna replicates and the cell is about to divide like in arm phase the DNA condenses and coils into X-shaped form of a chromosome. So this chromatin form of chromosome, as you see here in S phase, there will be the duplication and replication of the strand of the chromosomes. They will, there will be the formation of these strands. So they will appear like this loose chromatin form. While in condensed form, they can only be seen in the M phase or the division phase. of. As the S phase is followed by the G2 phase, but in meiosis 1 of the interphase 1, the G2 phase does not take place. As G2 phase is involved in the duplication of the genetic material and all the preparation takes place for the M phase. But it lacks in meiosis 1 of interphase 1 because it will avoid the unnecessary duplication of the genetic material that may cause interference in the genetic diversity that may take place in the process of the meiosis 1, more specifically in the prophase 1, the genet that is responsible for the genetic recombination. So this duplication that takes place during G2 phase, it may cause interference with this phase, with M phase of meiosis 1 phase of the meiosis. So that's why the G2 phase does not take place in the interphase 1 of the meiosis 1. Let's begin with the phases of the meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, the longest phase is the prophase 1, in which basically the genetic diversity and the genetic recombination takes place. Then it is followed by all other these phases. In prophase 1, what happens? It is the first and the longest phase of meiosis, and it is further divided into five stages, and it is the longest phase of meiosis in which the genetic recombination takes place. So this phase is divided into five stages, leptotin, zygotin, pecaitin, diplotin, and dichinesis. Let's see one by one. Let's start from the, the prophase one of meiosis one starts with the leptotin stage. Leptotin, it is also known as the thin thread stage, which means that this is the first stage in which the chromosomes begins to condense. As the chromosomes are present, always present in the form of the chromatin, thin thread form, of chromosomes are known as the chromatin they only condenses in the cell division stage so the prophase one began with the leptotin in which 
the chromatin form of chromosomes they appear to become condensed and they start its becoming thick and these as the chromosomes they are present scattered they will start searching their homologous pair and they will arrange themselves in the form of homologous chromosomes as each cell of the human contains the 46 number of chromosomes which are present in 23 pairs like 23 comes from the father and 23 comes from the mother each of these chromosome have identical chromosome which has the same which are same in size and have the same number of genes present on them so they will assort their homologous pair and arrange themselves in the form of homologous chromosomes in the stage of the leptotein the next stage of the zygotein now these homologous pair of chromosomes will come near to each other and they will form a pair known as the synapses this synapses is formed through a synaptic naval complexes and they will start joining at any point of these chromosomes the other stage is the pechitine pechitine is the stage in which these chromosomes will start condensing and this is the stage in which the part of the chromosome will get exchanged as you can see here these sister chromatids their parts are exchanged to their homologous pair of chromosome this process is known as recombination and also known as crossing over so the crossing over of chromosomes takes place in pechitine stage of the prophase 1 the next stage is the diplotene is also known as duplication stage this is the stage in which as the crossing over has been completed so these chromosomes will start separating from each other they will get separated from the other parts but they will attach at one point and this one point at which they are attached is known as the chiasma the chromatids of the homologous chromosomes begin to separate from the centromere while the other chromatids as they in the previous stage they were from the synapses they were come together so now they will be moving apart but still the one side the one chromatids are still homologous chromatids are still attached at one point and this point is known as this is known as chiasma so the chiasma formation takes place in the stage of the diplotene it is followed by diakinesis as the diakinesis as kinesis means moving apart so diakinesis in which the two chromosomes die is for the two chromatids so these two, two chromatids still they start moving apart from each other and then they act as a two separate homologous pair of chromosomes in this stage let's recall with the five stages of the prophase one the leptotene in which the condensation of chromosomes begins in stage two zygotene in which the homologous chromosomes pair up together to form a synapsis as the four chromatids together are known as tetrid then in pechitine the crossing over as the part of the sister chromatids exchange with each other the crossing over takes place in the pechitine in diplotene finally the chiasma formation takes place these chromatids after exchanging the genetic material or after crossing over they start moving apart but they are still attached to the one sister chromatid or at one end this is known as chiasma formation finally diakinesis in which all the as they are still attached at one part they still they get detached and moving apart from each other so these two chromosomes will be present as a homologous chromosomes as the crossing over has already take place as in the prophase one the other changes also takes place as the centrioles begins to move to the opposite pole of the cell the nuclear membrane disappears and there is the formation of microtubules takes place that attach to the centromeres of the chromosomes so these changes also takes place with the five stages of the prophase one as the prophase is followed by the metaphase in which the chromosomes align themselves on the equatorial of the plate the spindle fibers attached to the chromosomes as the chromosomes are present in the form of homolo homologous pairs the one spindle fiber from the one pole attached to the one chromosome and the other spindle fiber 
from the other pole attached to the other chromosomes. As in this case, in metaphase 1, the spindle fibers from each of the opposite poles will attach to each chromosome as they will not attach to sister chromatids separately, but they will attach to the whole chromosomes on the opposite so that they will move toward the opposite poles in the next stage of the meiosis 1. After the chromosomes have aligned themselves on the equatorial of the plate and they are attached to spindle fibers from each opposite poles as they are attached to centromere which has a special type of protein known as kinetochore, the spindle fiber attached to these kinetochores are known as kinetochore fibers. The spindle fibers are, that are not attached to the kinetochore are known as the cytoplasmic microtubules or spindle fibers. Cytoplasmic spindle fibers are also at present in the cell and they are involved in the elongation of the cell as you can see here as they start moving apart so they causes the elongation of the cell. So the spindle fibers that are attached to the each chromosome as this is unique for the meiosis 1 that each from the opposite pole the spindle fibers are attached to the centromere or the kinetochore of each chromosomes. So in anaphase, basically the chromosomes, they start moving towards the opposite poles. These spindle fibers, as these are microtubules, these are protein in nature, they start moving towards the opposite poles. They get denatures. It's just like reeling a fish. And then each of the homologous chromosomes are separated from each other and start moving toward the opposite poles. So these homologous chromosomes will separate and each pole will contain the 23 chromosomes will move to the one pole and 23 chromosomes will move to the other pole. As this movement of chromosomes is, we can say that these are the random assortment of chromosomes. At this stage, the mixing of genes also occurs that it will randomly, the parental chromosome with the from the paternal chromosome, the chromosomes from the mother will move toward the one pole and the chromosomes from the mother will move toward the other pole but they will mix together they will randomly some of the chromosome will move to the one pole and some to the other pole so 23 will move to the one pole and 23 to the other pole and these homologous pairs are separated from the, each other so they from the diploid we say that in homologous pairs we say that they are diploid chromosomes and when they move toward the opposite poles they are haploid as now they don't have their homologous chromosomes so haploid move towards the opposite poles of the cell as soon the chromosomes move toward the opposite poles the telophase one is the opposite of the prophase in which the chromosomes begin to uncoil and form and comes into the chromatin form again. The nuclear membrane is reformed, the chromosomes uncoil and decondense, and this nucleus is divided into two. We say that karyokinesis takes place in the telophase one. And finally, the spindle fibers also begins to break down, and there is the formation of nuclear envelope. And the cytoplasm is divided into two, which is known as cytokinesis. So, as the one parent cell is divided into two daughter cells, which contains the half number of chromosomes in case of meiosis 1, as the parent cell contains the 46 chromosome, there is the formation of two daughter cells, each carrying the 23 and 23 number of chromosomes. The meiosis 1 is followed by meiosis 2, which is same like that of mitosis in which the daughter cells which were formed in the meiosis 1, they are divided into meiosis 2. Let's see in detail about the meiosis 2, which we say that it just seems like that of mitosis, in which the division of these cells takes place, as the two cells were formed and each of them will give rise to two daughter cells. Then each cell will give rise to two cells, so there will be total number of four daughter cells will be formed at the end of meiosis 2. And each will be having, having the same number of chromosomes as that of these daughter cells. As there were 23 number of chromosomes, two cells with having 23 number of chromosomes enter into meiosis 2. So at the end of the meiosis 2, there will be the production of four daughter cells and each will be having 
the same number of chromosomes that will be 23 and which is the half of the original parent cell. Let's start as the meiosis 2. Before meiosis 2, the cell passes through the cell cycle. So that's why in cell cycle has two main phases. We say that interphase and M phase. So the interphase of meiosis 2 is also known as interphase 2. While the cell passes through the interphase 2, it is a very short phase and it consists of G1 and G2 phase as the S phase does not take place in the interphase 2 or we say that in meiosis before meiosis 2 when the cell passes through the cell cycle to the interphase it is a very quick phase and very short phase and the S phase as the synthesis of chromosome does not take place at its already taken place in the interphase 1. As the S phase is the duplication phase and the synthesis phase in which the DNA content is doubled. So in meiosis 2 as the chromosomes are also are already present in the form of sister chromatids and they are attached to centromeres so S phase and the synthesis phase is not needed in the interphase 2. After that when the after meiosis 1 at the end of meiosis, the two daughter cells are formed. They will pass through the G phase of the cell cycle, and then they will. In the meiosis two begins with the prophase two. As prophase two is different from that of the prophase one, in this is simple, just like that of the mitosis. The centrioles begins to move towards the opposite pole of the cell. The nuclear membrane disappears. There is the formation of microtubules takes place and they will start attaching to the centromeres of the chromosomes from the, each opposite pole of the cell. After, prophase, after the prophase 2, it is followed by the metaphase 2, in which the spindle fibers that were attached to a centromere, to the centromere there is a special type of protein known as chiatochore, and these spindle fibers when attached to this chiatochore are known as chiatochore fibers. And the spindle fibers that are not attached to the chiatochore are known as cytoplasmic spindle fibers and they are involved in the elongation of the cytoplasm during division. So these chiatochore fibers are attached from the opposite poles of the cell to each sister chromatid which makes sure the equal division of the sister chromatids towards the opposite poles. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes arrange themselves and rotate it to the 90 degree. So the chromosomes align at the equatorial plate which is rotated 90 degree. So this is the difference between the metaphase 2 and the metaphase 1. That in metaphase 1 the chromosomes are aligned on the center of the equatorial plate or metaphase plate. While in metaphase 2 the chromosomes align themselves on the metaphase plate or equatorial plate and they are rotated to 90 degree. That each chromatid face the opposite poles of the cell. After the chromosomes have arranged themselves on the equatorial of the plate, they start moving towards the opposite poles. As these spindle fibers are protein nature, microtubulin, they denatures and they start moving apart towards the opposite pole so that each sister chromatid will be separated. As the chromosomes were having the two sister chromatids, so each sister chromatid will be moved towards the opposite pole of the cell. So this process is the end phase in which these astrochromatid move towards the opposite poles of the cell. Finally, the cells have moved towards the opposite poles at the end of the meiosis 2, which is the, the last phase is the telophase 2, in which the chromosomes, the astrochromatids, which are considered as a whole chromosome, they move towards the opposite pole of the cell. The spindle fibers disintegrates, the chromosomes again decondense and appears to form a chromatin, the nuclear membranes redevelop and then finally it is followed by the cytokinesis. In cytokinesis it is the division of the cell there is the cleavage furrow occurs and the cytoplasm splits into two as finally each cells it will give to the production of the two daughter cells. So in total there will be the production of the four daughter cells having the haploid number of chromosomes that 23, 23 and 23 number of chromosomes are formed at the end of the meiosis 2 
or telophase 2. As the, at the end of the meiosis, there is the production of four cells, each having the haploid number of chromosomes 23, 23, and 23. As it was started from the diploid cell that were containing the 46 number of chromosomes. So in meiosis 1, first they give rise to two daughter cells, each having 23 and 23 chromosomes. So diploid was reduced into haploid number of cells. As you can see here, there is the homologous pair of chromosomes that were arranged in the meiosis 1 and these homologous pairs are separated. One chromosome moved towards the 23 chromosomes moved to the one pole and 23 to the other pole. So that's how we get the 23 and 23. After that, it is followed by meiosis 2 in which there is only division occurs. As you can see here, these chromosomes these sister chromatids are separated. So 23 sister chromatids will move to the one pole and 23 sister chromatids will move to the other pole of the cell. So that's how each cell will give rise to two daughter cells. And at the end, we get the four daughter cells from the one single parent cell. What is the significance of meiosis? As we have seen that meiosis has three important reasons why meiosis must take place in some specific type of cells as they are involved in the reduction of cells of chromosomes from diploid to haploid. So that's why the survival is possible that these haploid cells during sexual reproduction, they will give rise to the diploid organisms. It also enables the genetic diversity as we have seen that genetic diversity, how through genetic recombination in the process one and also the random assortment of chromosomes in the meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and also aids in the repair of genetic defects if there is any genetic defect present they will be removed through recombination genetic recombination of alleles or sister chromatids let's see in detail first of all the first significance of meiosis is it allows the sexual reproduction of diploid organisms how as it is involved in the reduction of chromosome numbers as 23 comes from the mother and 23 comes from the father. And these haploid then together form the diploid zygote that is responsible for the development and formation of organism. And once the zygote formation takes place, then after that, the cells undergoes mitosis for the development of fetus. The second significance of meiosis is that it enables genetic diversity as how it enables the genetic diversity through crossing over and recombination of chromosomes as it was takes place in the prophase one of the meiosis one as you can see here these are the different genes as labeled here so when the crossing over takes place it exchanges their genetic part and at the end of meiosis two we get the four different as shown here are the four but we get the 23, 23, and 23 different chromosomes with having the different recombination of genes. So that's why all the humans are different from each other and they have different traits from each other because of these genetic recombinations. If these genetic recombination does not take place, the survival of the organism would be difficult. As what is the significance of these recombinations? The genetic diversity means that there will be certain individuals with any given population that will be able to better survive and they will be able to survive for food availability and they will be able to resist the weather patterns and diseases and other species and they will be responsible for the species continuity. So these have the significance of this recombination genetic diversity. The other one is they are involved in the repair of genetic defects that in case if there is some defect in the genes then through recombination as this was occurred in the prophase one of the meiosis one the genetic as if in case the genetic uh, disease or there occurs then these genetic defects will be replaced by these recombination process so that's why it will allow the healthy offsprings the recombination which occurs in meiosis can be further helpful in repair of the genetic defects in the next generation. If a genetic defect is present in a certain allele of one parent, recombination can replace this allele with a healthy allele of the other parent, allowing for healthy 
offspring. So if there is any genetic defect, it can be replaced through recombination and maybe this cell will fuse into the zygote formation and it will be responsible for the healthy offspring. So there is also the, this is also the significance of meiosis. So overview of meiosis, we have stated that meiosis in which the genetic information from the parents to the offspring is transferred through the process of gametogenesis and the germline cells are produced by the process of meiosis because we need the half number of chromosomes. So they were divided into two phases, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is known as a reduction in which actually the number of chromosomes are reduced from 46 to 23 as the homologous chromosomes, they were known as diploid and from diploid they are converted into haploid. And then meiosis 2, only the separation of the sister chromatid occurs and that's why the number of chromosomes are 23, 23 and 23 that is same as the, at the end of the cells that were formed meiosis 1 but they are half the number as compared to their original parent cell. If you were able to understand, don't forget to watch other videos.